Can you be so fit that you die? It's not really a question that personally keeps me up at night, but I did start to wonder why, over the last few decades, have so many cyclists died mysteriously in their sleep? Like most men hurtling towards middle age, I bought myself a road bike and some ridiculous lycra, and on a beautiful London sunny day like today, I like to pretend I'm in the Tour de France. However, as soon as I hit a hill, I remember that I'm not Marco Pantani. The late Marco Pantani is regarded as one of the greatest hill climbers in cycling history. He pushed his body to such extremes that his resting heart rate was only 34 beats per minute. When he slept, it could drop so low that his life was actually in danger, meaning that he had to wake up and ride on a stationary bicycle to get his heart rate up. During the day, he lived to ride, but at night, he rode to stay alive. Assuming you're not watching this YouTube video whilst A. swimming the 800 meters or B. being Mo Farah, your cardiac output at rest, i.e. the volume of blood your heart pumps in a minute, will be around 5 litres, and your heart will weigh something like 300 grams. However, if you're an Etruscan shrew, your heart weighs only 20 milligrams and beats over 1500 times a minute. Conversely, an elephant's heart weighs a whopping 15 to 20 kilograms and beats 30 times a minute. In fact, most mammals have a fairly linear inverse relationship between body mass and heart rate. The bigger the heart, the slower the rate. Yet Miguel Indurain, another legendary cyclist, in fact a five-time Tour de France winner, famously had a resting heart rate even lower than Pantani's at 26 beats per minute. And despite speculation at the time, I can definitively confirm he was human. So how on earth did these men have heart rates comparable to that of an elephant's. Let's go back to you and your resting cardiac output of 5 litres a minute. You could probably get this up to 20 litres a minute at peak exercise, again, assuming you're fairly average. A fit amateur cyclist might get to 25 litres a minute. Indoran could exceed 50 litres a minute. Figures like this tell you immediately that these athletes are freaks. They possess amongst the most extreme physiology you will find in a member of our species. Their metabolism is more efficient and their hearts are literally bigger than normal. Let's contrast this with someone very far from extraordinary, me. My Fitbit tells me that my resting heart rate is 48 beats per minute. When I sleep, as is normal, my heart rate drops. I found my heart rate appears to drop below 40 at night. Now, I'm clearly far less fit than these cyclists, yet I don't need to wake up at night to speed my heart up. So why did Pantani? As some of you may have guessed, the one major factor I haven't mentioned so far is that both these men were racing in the 1990s when performance-enhancing drugs permeated the sport. Now, performance-enhancing drugs are a discussion for another day and another video, so before the lawyers get involved, I should say that neither of these athletes tested positive during their careers, but their hematocrits were very high. The hematocrit is the proportion of your blood that's made up of red cells. The red cell's job is to carry oxygen from the lungs to the body, including your muscles. A high hematocrit can be achieved by taking excess amounts of a naturally occurring hormone, erythropoietin, or EPO. Yes or no? Was one of those banned substances EPO? Yes. As muscles work harder, they need more oxygen. The more oxygen you can deliver, the more work the muscles can do. We can actually measure this in an exercise lab. The VO2 max is the maximum oxygen consumption someone can achieve. I had mine measured in Cambridge a few years ago and got a barely above average VO2 max of 48. VO2 max measurements are commonly used in healthcare, not for the very fit, but for patients whose hearts aren't working well, to give us an idea of when to intervene. I used to perform this test in patients referred for consideration for a heart transplant. To give you an idea of scale, a patient would qualify for a transplant if their VO2 max fell below 14. I'm here somewhere in the middle, and Pantani and Induran are way up here, with VO2 max readings in excess of 100, in part because they had so many red cells to carry that oxygen. But all these red cells come at a price. The combination of an almost pathologically slow heart rate and noticeably more viscous blood meant that when the cyclist's bodily function slowed during sleep, they were literally risking death. 
an excerpt from Matt Rendell's biography, The Death of Marco Pantani. The gel-like blood is great for high performance, but totally unsuited to rest, and at night, when the heartbeat slows, its sheer density becomes a liability. It is as if the fleets of heavy traffic rumbling down the motorway with fuel for the furnaces suddenly slowed to a crawl in a potentially catastrophic traffic snarl-up. The athlete has to set his heart rate monitor to beep whenever his pulse drops below a certain level, say 35 beats per minute. When it sounds, he has to wake up and exercise to coax his straining heart into action. Between 1987 and 1992, when EPO was new on the scene and doctors weren't experienced at doping athletes safely, 20 young Belgian and Dutch cyclists and seven Swedish endurance athletes died mysteriously in their sleep. Mortality has improved, but cyclists have continued to die in their sleep as recently as 2009 or even November 2017. Pantani himself retired under a cloud of performance-enhancing drug allegations and withdrew from society. He was tragically found dead in 2004, and his post-mortem revealed heart failure and cocaine toxicity. I don't wish to speculate on the circumstances of his death, but cocaine can cause heart attacks even in fit people by causing the arteries supplying the heart to spasm, but also by affecting the stickiness of the blood, making it more likely to clot, just like a high hematocrit. He was 35 years old. Elite athletes' hearts can do strange things. Watch out for future videos where I'll discuss some of these. And sometimes extreme fitness comes with its own problems, but it's highly unlikely to be fatal, unless you throw drugs into the mix. So no, you can't be so fit that you die. Don't forget to check the description below for some further reading. This is my second video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up uh, to tell the great YouTube algorithm in the sky. If you didn't, there's really nothing I can do about that now. It's kind of weird that you watched to the end. You should probably subscribe anyway, just to keep tabs on how bad my future videos will be. If you want me to stop making videos altogether, then I will challenge you to a cycling road race, but no hills.